Hey, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you saw my last video, we have a lot of really cool Hotchkiss parts to install. But before we get those in, we have to remove all the factory suspension. Today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the rear suspension. So that's gonna be the shocks, the leaf springs, and the rear axle. Maybe you're wondering why the rear axle? Well, in the future, I wanna be able to run the largest wheel and tire combination I can in the car. And a common upgrade is to use a B-body rear axle. And what that does is it's actually two inches narrower all overall and the leaf spring perches are also moved in. And if you use offset leaf spring shackles like I'm gonna do, that allows you to get a bigger wheel and tire combo in the back of the car. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Let's get into it. And the first things we're gonna do is get underneath this thing and start draining out the diff fluid. That's right, a while back when I had the third member out of the car, upgrade to 373, I also drilled and tapped the bottom of um, the rear end housing to put a drain plug in there. Some people think, why are you putting a drain plug in your housing? This is exactly why. I don't want to be cracking the third member fluid going all over my garage. So now I'll be able to crack that open, get the drain plug out, let it all drain out nice and slowly. Although it's probably going to take a while. It's February, even though I've had the heater going, it's still pretty chilly in here. It's probably gonna take some time, but it's gonna eliminate the mess. So we're gonna get that drain in right now. All right, so that's all it is. There's my little drain plug and got her out. She's draining away right now. So it's only been a minute, but let's take a look. Yeah, she's still draining. It's gonna be a little while. Thick gear oil is, takes some time. So while that's working its magic, I'm gonna get I'm going to break loose all the lug nuts, get the car up on jack stands, and get it prepped. So the car is up in the air, the wheels and tires are off. Fluid's still draining, we're making progress there. Now we're gonna get the drive shaft out of the rear end yoke and get the shocks off. Go from there. Yeah, that's what the big Spicer 1350U joint looks like. And my beautiful Dynamotech aluminum drive shaft. It's a little hard to hold the camera down here, but you get the idea. All right, so just got the uh, drive shaft out of the yoke. And one thing you always want to do is make sure you support your drive shaft. Don't let it hang and put pressure on your tail shaft housing and your seal. And a great easy way to do it, zip ties. I think this one only took like three or four. It supports it wrapped around your exhaust. It's your uh, zip tie moment. Zip tie moment? Who, who do you think you are? Roadkill? Easy, no problem. We'll do the top uh, later. Yeah. All right. It's nice. A lot of the stuff hasn't been on too long, so it's coming off fairly easy. So we have uh, the rear valence off, came out, you know, no problem. And now what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, since the rear diff is done draining, I'm gonna put the drain plug back in it, clean out my drain pan, and start draining out the brake lines. Uh, the right rear is the furthest away from the master, so I'm gonna crack that one open and uh, 
see if I can not make a mess again and uh, get the brake fluid draining. And while the brake fluid is draining, I can, in conjunction, get the drums off and pull the axles off. So that's the plan. All right, so we're going to unbolt the axles from the housing. So the way you do it is make sure your vehicle is in neutral so you can spin this around because you have one access hole right here in your axle flange to spin this around to get to your five bolts that hold the axle in and they are 9 16 so I can use either an extension in with a socket and get in there get these off It's nice that all this brake, brake hardware and everything here is pretty clean because I just put brakes on it, you know, like a year ago or so. So everything in pretty good shape. Nothing has had time to sit on there for, you know, 40 years. So it's pretty easy to service. And the, uh, the diff fluid looked real good. I mean, again, I didn't expect any surprises there because that was... The third member was all rebuilt, and uh, again, just a couple years ago when I got the car on the road, so that looked great. But like I said, going to the, the shorter housing, pretty common swap. People use the B body with the inch shorter on each side, so. The E body leaf spring perches are 46 inches center to center, and the B body is exactly 44. So, and by doing that, when you move your leaf springs in, the front mount does, is offset as well. And you use an offset shackle kit from Dr. Dip. He sells one, so it's a one inch offset. So, all that put together gives you a, the maximum really clearance you can get at least in your stock wheel housing. So that is the plan. And it's pretty simple to do. It's just like a bunch of labor, but I'm going to be in, in this already. So I'm like, now's the time. All right, five bolts are out, or five nuts. Good. All right, so I just took out the right rear brake line. I've tried draining it by cracking open the bleeder and putting a hose on it but it never really seals up perfectly so it kind of makes a mess but it's just going to run down the backing plate on the back side and drain into my cleaned uh drain can so what i'm gonna do now is under the hood i'm gonna make sure the uh master cylinder cover is just cracked open all right so we're gonna crack open master cylinder yeah, so we can get that to drain up and make sure it's not airtight so. all right so now we're going to pull the axles off still letting all the brake fluid drain out but um, i think i'm going to have to crack the fitting on top of the housing next but here we are so if you slide Wiggle this plate up enough, you should be able to just slide the housing or the axle. Oh, uh, you want to be careful sliding this out because you have your seals right inside the housing and the splines, if you're not careful, you can definitely cut and damage those. The last thing you want is dealing with leaky axle housing you see all right it's a mess i'm like getting a little fluid out of there actually this side is a little bit lower the car isn't sitting perfectly level so i have a little bit of fluid in the, this tube but all right making good progress today i'm gonna go put this over on the other side keep it cleaned up but that's how stuff So it took me a little bit to get the uh, emergency brake out of the backing plate 
that was uh that was a that wasn't fun but got it out then after that popped out the uh backing plates tapped those off and now what we're going to do is and then i also disconnected the uh brake line can't hardly see it there from the uh, junction and now i'm going to take off both of the brake lines off the housing because it's just sitting there get that i want to get that out of the way and then after that i'm going to unbolt the rear shackles that way i can just lower the rear the springs and the housing while the housing is still on the leaf springs the, i think that's going to make it a lot easier rather than trying to juggle and walk the housing off the leaf springs i'm just going to lower the whole assembly the leaf springs are getting changed out anyway so now is the time to do that All right, what I just used to help tap out the shackles is just a you know, punch. I mean, if you use a screwdriver, sometimes I'll use that to pry, but really prying on the rubber bushing just kind of has a lot of spring effect. But a little punch, once you get it kind of like halfway out of the bushings in, you can just grab it and wiggle it out with some force. And those, uh, and the nuts were 11 sixteenths. So now the rear springs are all free. And again, the uh, shocks are off, brake lines are off, draft shaft is out. So now we should be able to just lower this thing down. I'm going to raise it up just a bit so I can get my handle in a good angle. All right, she's all unbolted and down we go. I had to move the drag shaft a little out of the way to make sure it cleared the yoke. But look how easy that is rather than trying to wrestle with the housing over the axles. I'm sorry, the housing over the springs while the springs still in. This is nice. Now all I have to do is undo the U-bolts and get that housing out. And then I'll take the center chunk out. <clears throat> so my uh, three quarter inch deep wall socket is broken. Forgot to put that on the parts replace list. You know those lists, you gotta have them. Missing parts you lose or thick tools you break. So I'm not going to do all these U-bolt nuts with my ratchet and wrench. Could be worse. Could be better. Right, now the U-bolts are all out. Luckily, I just put those in when I upgraded my center section to new gears a year or two years ago. So I had a new U-bolt. So my ratchet and wrench worked out fine. But now we just got to walk this thing out. See if I can balance it. And this is the way to do it right here so much easier nice now unbolt the center chunk and put that off to the side and uh yeah i don't really think i need this contraption it's really not doing much unless it's just for protection i know that mopar used to make an adjustable rubber pin in the summer, but I don't know. all right so break this off then get the housing cleaned up and uh, should be done for today. To get out the center section, I'm gonna use my old school half inch electric gun. So my dad gave me this like decades ago. It's pretty cool. I don't have to fire up the air compressor today for anything or try to do that manually. And uh, yeah, 916 socket and uh, we're gonna get in there. Oh, all right, it's 
shame too, I was thinking, because I had this thing sealed up. Nice. It was not leaking. Now that the rear axle's out of the way, it's time to get rid of those old leaf springs and shocks because we're not using those again. All right, these springs are off out no problem and the shocks came out that yeah, was no problem as well but uh, I had one little surprise on the leaf springs the front one of the front mounts had one nut that gave me a problem check that out a bunch of cobbled together nuts anyway but this one the the, the rest were all 9 16 but this one with 9 16 wouldn't fit it's gonna beat up but luckily a 14 millimeter did the job to save me from having to get medieval with it. So, hey, one scare, but 14 worked perfect. So, that was cool. So, my plan is to actually swap out the E body rear axle housing with a B body rear axle housing. It's a real popular swap. That way, when you do that and run your offset shackles, it allows you to get a bigger tire and wheel in the wheel well. So, without having to modify your wheel well. But, I looked all around locally, couldn't find one, so what I did come across is a guy who could narrow my factory housing. So reached out to him, real nice guy, and worked out, gave me a really good price on narrowing the housing and moving the perches in to all B-body specs. So I just picked it up, so check it out. All right, so here it is, so he cut off the ends right at the end, um, welded on new perches. And I had the idea about putting a little uh, fill plug in. Got this uh, screw in fill plug. That way you can easily fill in the housing or check out your ring gear, your third member, if you, for any inspection. So I thought that was kind of cool. And um, I'm going to load it up now and then go get it dropped off at the powder coater. So we're going to do it in like a semi gloss black. And. Um, and then put it all back together. So maybe you're wondering how much it actually costs to get my rear axle narrowed. Well, the guy charged me $200 just to narrow it, but we also had to do the leaf spring purchase. So we cut off the O's and bought new ones and re-rolled those on. That was like another, I think, 60 or 80 bucks. And then to do the fill plug, that was like another 40 bucks or so. So I had just over $300 into the whole thing. So. Not too bad. I looked all around locally trying to find a B-body housing, but there, I couldn't find one locally. So came across this guy and it worked out pretty good. So I'm happy with what he did. Now I still gotta find axles, right? You can't use your factory ones. You need ones that are a little bit narrower. Now I did find, come across another guy in my search for a B-body housing who said he had axles. So I'm gonna meet up with him in the next few days. And he said he, had, he was actually willing to swap out my axles with him. So we'll see, hopefully that pans out. If not, I'll have to pony up for new axles or keep searching. So 
Anyway, time crunch is coming, so I gotta keep moving on this, so. So that's my plan with the rear axle and how much it cost. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get all the rear suspension out of the CUDA. In the next video, we're gonna be working on the front suspension, getting all the factory stuff out. So make sure you tune in, you don't wanna miss it. And again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like if you haven't. If you have a platform to share it, feel free to share. I'll see you guys next time.